Hello and welcome to Class Time. I'm Brittany Henderson. And I am Wade and Price, your teachers for today's mathematics lesson. All right, let's begin. All righty, so today we're looking at measurement. And our particular focus for this lesson is converting units of length, area, capacity, time, and speed. Mm. All right. Exciting lesson ahead, right? Yeah, very. All right. So, why do we need to be able to measure things? Why is this important? Why is measurement important? Any ideas? Well, as we can see on the graphics, if you're, if you're going to buy uh, a suit of clothes, uh, uh, a shoe, pair of shoe, then definitely you'd want to know your, your actual size. So you, you, you tell me, say, I just don't want to just go and go figure it and just buy me a shoes. Just buy me a shoes? That well, can't work? Well, well, it can. Depends on how you want to walk in it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so we need some accuracy. We need to know exactly what size my shirt is, what size yeah. my shoe is, how yeah. long should I buy the piece of um, board, how, you know? We need to know yeah. exact measurements. All right. So suppose we wanted to measure a two by two by four for building a house. Mm. Um, numbers by themselves. Yeah. It don't really make no sense, right? Two times two, two multiply two by four. four. Well, it's just that um, persons who are in the construction field may may know when they say two by four, or ten, you hear they say two before, right? But that still don't give the, the full um, dimension of the of the board itself. And me, as the layman, I got to the two before. I don't know what is the two before. <laughs> so I would need a little bit more, right? Definitely. Okay. How about this? Um, a board is 350 long. Mm. 350 long. What? No, I'm absolutely confused. Yeah. Aren't you? 350 Very, long? What's that? What's that? Exactly. Nothing really. All right. So units by themselves don't make sense mm. either. So a board is meters long. No, oh yeah, boy, yeah, you're throwing me yeah. over the over the over the board. Over the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a meters long. What is that? So from this little exercise, to make sense of all the measurements, we need both our numbers and units. Definitely. So I need to know that it's 350 meters. meters. Right? I need both my number and my units. Mm -hmm. Estimation. Mm -hmm. Why do we estimate? You remember I said to you before, just buy my shoes. You can just estimate yeah, from just this. Yeah, estimate. Yeah, guesstimate. Guesstimate. Right. So it's important at times. So although measurement is very important, there are, there are times when you just really need an, an estimate. Right? So, but um, it, it is very good that your estimate is, is close to the actual uh, measurement. All right. Right. Um, these two words, precision yeah. and accuracy. You hear these things a yeah, lot, don't yeah, it? Yeah. Why we need to be right. precise? Well, as it says, precision is a description of how close measurements are to each other. All right, so how close, and then we also need accuracy. accuracy. So that's comparing the measurements to the actual or accepted value. Yeah. So you need both precision and, and accuracy. accuracy. All right. So, no, mm. I know that you guys are familiar with what is known as the SI system. Yeah. Well, you should be familiar, right? Let's talk about this a little bit. So, in the US, the English or the standard system is used, while most, the, most of the rest of the world uses the metric system or the SI system. Mm. The SI, which is International System of Units system, is the form of measurement typically used by scientists. Mm. Right. And scientists use the SI system worldwide because measurements are easily understood by all scientists, yeah. right? So we're making some standardizations right. here. Measurements are easier to convert than the English system. Mm, definitely. Which we'll see a <laughs> in a little while, right? So those are the two main things. There's some standardization mm -hmm. and it is easy Easier for convert, convert. conversion, right? Yeah. All right. So the basic types of measurements that we want to look at are length, which is the, measures the distance between objects, mm -hmm. volume, which measures the amount of space something takes up, and mass, which measures the amount of matter in an, in object. an object, right? 
And there are other types of measurements yeah. that we can talk about, such as um, temp time, time and temperature. temperature. All right. Yeah. So here we have the, the comparison now between the English and the SI system. So as we, as we were having the discussion earlier offset about um, although we are using the, the SI system, we are using meter, centimeter, gram, kilogram, liter, there, there are still cases where we still use the, the yard, inches, pound, um, quart, and so forth. So all of these yard, inches, um, pound, quart, these are the English system. While in the SI system, now that is where you have the meters, the centimeters, the, the gram, the liters, and so forth. Yes, that's certainly true. Because when you go to the shop, it's a pound of chicken, no? You want yeah, a pound of chicken? Yeah. yeah, I'm going to really say, want a kil <laughs> can I get a kilogram of chicken, please? <laughs> no. All right. All measurement systems have standards. Mm -hmm. So we know that there are standards for conversion, for comparison. Standards are the exact quantities that mm -hmm. everyone agrees to use as a basis of comparison. Yeah. And the importance is there was an agreement among persons yeah, that this is what we're going to do and this yeah. is how we're going to standardize yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So in the English system, when you have to remember a lot of things <laughs> to convert, let's look. So 12, 12 inches, inches in a foot. One foot, three feet, one yard. Go on, man, continue, <laughs> you're on a roll. Come on, Mr. Price. Oh boy, this was really heart rending. Are, are still because we still use them at times. You know? So you have to remember all of these. And suppose I said, oh, but I wonder if it's three ounces make a pound, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to remember all of these, con all of these basic conversions mm -hmm. to be able to convert from one unit to the next. Yeah. This is tiresome. So the great scientists and persons who are, you know, well, well learnt, came up with the <laughs> SI system. And this system is based on our number system. It's based on a base that uses um, the base, base 10, 10. Yeah. system, right? Yeah. So which is something that we're familiar mm -hmm. with. Right. So when we talk about place value, remember that yeah, thing? Yeah, definitely. Right? So, so there's an easy connection right there between the base 10 system as it pertains to, to the measurement and the place value system. Yes. So, so there, there shouldn't really be any major challenge in terms of conversion. There shouldn't be. But, you know, but sometimes we have a little trouble. All right. So as was mentioned before, if you look at this table, this should remind you of our place yeah. value table. Yeah. As you can see, we have our units, which is our base. Mm -hmm. So we have units, which is one. And as we go up, we're increasing by 10. Yeah. And as we go down, we're, we're decreasing, decreasing by 10. 10. So mm -hmm. multiply by 10 as we go up. All right, so the system works with the SI measurements. The unit becomes whichever type of measurement you're looking at. So whether it's mass, volume, yeah. or length. Yeah. And it is the same regardless of if you're measuring length, mass, volume, which you mm -hmm. said before. All right. So if you're measuring mass, yeah. then gram... Mm -hmm. And, you know, gram is your unit, unit now. Right? right? And then we have variations, which is centigram, centigram milligram. milligram. If we're looking at length, we have meter as our base unit. Yeah. And then we can have variations, kilometer, decometer, decometer, and we can go on. If we're looking at a volume, our base mm -hmm. unit is liters. liters. And we, again, we have variations, deciliter, hectoliter, so forth. So the first part of the term indicates the amount, and the second part indicates the type of measurement, right? So again, volume would be liter, mm -hmm. and the first section, which would be deci, would indicate the amount, the amount. of liters. All right, so centi here would indicate the amount. Yes, so centi is the amount. And then gram. And then gram is the type of measure, which type in this case measure. we're looking at mass. Right. Right. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at some SI system conversions. I'm kind yeah. of excited now because we know <laughs> that we're using the base 10 place value system, right? It's the same concept, increasing by powers of 10, decreasing Increase by, by powers power of 10, 10, right? So, for example, in the metric system, if you wanted to know how many centimeters were in three meters, what would you do? Mm. Question at home. Oh, we're throwing it out. So guys, at home, 
if we wanted to know how many centimeters there are in three meters, what would you do? All right. You think them start right. working? Them start get it? working, yes. All right. Let's run it. All right, run it. <clears throat> so first things first is you want to first establish your SI system table. Definitely. Yeah. And as you can see here, we have our units, and then we have kilo, hectare, deco, deci, centi, and milli, right? The unit in this case is we're looking at meters. meters. Mm -hmm. So that's our base, and we're converting from meters <coughs> to, to centimeters. centimeters. So three meters. First, you find the unit you have, which we mentioned before, which mm -hmm. is meters. Then... We find the unit you are changing to, which is, in this case, centimeters. centimeters. And lastly, you then count the number of units in between. So we're going from our unit right. to our centi centimeters. And we're counting mm -hmm. the number of units between. And in this case, how many units between mm -hmm. we have? Two. Two. Two units. Okay. Right. And so... This case, we're going uh, to be multiplying, multiplying by, by 100. 100. And two units then converts into, remember, we're increasing by, by 10, 10, right? right. So, so it's 10 and then 10 by 10. Yes. 10 times 10 rather give you 100. Yes. Right. So we're <clears> moving <throat> to the right. So three meters is actually 300 centimeters. Definitely. So, so we are seeing where you need, you need more of a centimeter. To, to make, make up the, the meter. The, the meter, because meter would be a, a larger unit. Yes. Yes. All right. And, you know, we have this little chart here. Yeah. These are the most commonly used yeah. Um, yeah. SI units. So we generally use our base unit. Mm -hmm. We generally talk about kilometers, centimeters, and mm -hmm. millimeters. We don't so much talk about the hectare, the deci, and the, yeah. the deco. Yeah. Right? So we generally mm -hmm. focus on kilometers or kilo centi and milli yeah and as you can see as we move to the right so we're moving from a large unit to a smaller unit we tend to, to multiply multiply and as we move from a larger unit mm -hmm. sorry from a smaller <laughs> unit to a larger unit we tend yeah. to do the inverse operation which is divide definitely but, but it is always good where we started out in terms of um knowing the meaning of the of the prefix Centi. Right, mm -hmm. right. It, it is always good to start there. Normally, we see persons starting um, by using mnemonics. You mm -hmm. know, the one that say, kick, kick him down, hurry, don't commit murder. So students have to remember those mnemonics in order to know how do, do, how do I convert. Mm -hmm. But if we know the meaning of the, of the prefixes, then we can easily make the conversion. So we know that the centi would be one hundredth of the, of the meter, Yes. for example. Right, so that is very important. Okay, so that's something that definitely, if you're taking notes at home, guys, write that down. Um, kilo? Kilo. Kilo? Yes. Means what? Thousand. Okay, there so we go. So it's one thousand of the, of the meter. All right. So, guys, again, hope you're taking mm -hmm. notes of that. So let's look at some more conversions. And here we have 2,321 millimeters. And we are asked to convert this to meters. Yeah. So, again, we need to identify our units. Our unit. So, we identified our units. Our unit is meters. Yeah. We're now identifying where we want to go, which mm -hmm. is we want to convert. So, we're at milli. We're at millimeters, my bad. <laughs> so, our unit is millimeters, and we're identifying where we want to go, which is to the meters, to the meters. right? The second thing we need to do is, again, yeah. find out how many units in between. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's what? One, two, three. Three. Three yeah. units. So, so divide by? We're dividing by 1,000. And so we have 2.321 yeah. meters. Mm -hmm. And then we know how easy it is to, to divide or multiply by, by powers of 10. Mm -hmm. Right? So in, in this case, we see the, 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 the numbers just moving. Right? Some persons would say it's the decimal point that really moves, but it is actually the numbers. Right? So based on whether we are multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000, then those digits will move accordingly. Mm -hmm. That is true. So here's one. So here's another one, my bad. <laughs> so we have 521 grams mm -hmm. to hectograms. Yeah. You want to give them a second at home to just yeah, try sure. this one? So we have 521 grams and we're converting this to hectograms. Mm -hmm. What you get? Remember, what's our step? 
identify where we are, mm -hmm. where we need to go, mm -hmm. and count the number of units in between. Yeah. All right. I think they should get it by now, right? All right. So, it is 5.21 hectograms. hectograms. How many units were in between the grams and the hectograms? Uh, just two. Two units. Two. Mm -hmm. And so, as you can see there, we divided by right. 100. Yeah. 8.5 kiloliters to centiliters. Mm. Yeah. Again, the same principles would apply. Identify. Mm, identify where you are. Okay. Where and we need to go. Where we need to go. All right. So we're at kilo. We're going to centi. Yeah. And how many units in between? Mm, that's what. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Yeah. yeah, six, right? <laughs> okay. So it is eight million five hundred centiliters. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm. So from this little power that we just mm -hmm. have, there's some things that we need you to remember. We need for you to remember all measurements need both number and, and units. Unit. Three hundred fifty, what does that mean? Yeah. 350 meters, it gives me an idea as to what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. right? So we're looking at length, for example. Um, the basic units of measure are meter, liter, meter. and gram. Mm -hmm. So this is very important for you guys to remember. The basic units of measurement mm -hmm. are meter, liter, and mm -hmm. gram. And we also need for you to remember how to convert your yeah. metric units. And how do we convert again, mm. Mr. Price? Well, you, you determine which, which um, unit you are, you're using, whether you're at meter, centimeter, wherever, and then you look at where you want to go. Okay. Right? And then you count the number of spaces or gaps between where you are and where you want to go. And the operation is also important. So whether important. or not we're going to be multiplying or, or dividing yeah. depends on whether mm. we're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit or from a smaller unit to a larger unit. Definitely. All right. So, again, back to the basic measurements, and we're going to dip a little further into them. So, length, again, measures the distance of the, mm -hmm. uh, between the objects. Volume measures the amount of space something takes up. <laughs> okay. Mass measures the amount of matter in an mm -hmm. object. <laughs> and our basic SI units are... Meter, gram, liter. liter. Now, guys, we're stressing this for a mm -hmm. reason, right? So p please bear these things in mind. It's important for you to just remember them so it makes it easier for you to get on. All right. So now we're going to delve a little yeah. deeper into length. So length is the distance between two points. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if it's width, width height, height, depth, depth whatever, yeah. all lengths. Our measurements, yeah. right? So, so it's not necessarily the longest um, side that we really refer to as length. Exactly. Right. It's because the width is the length. The width is the length. The height is the length. Exactly. And the depth is also length. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the basic unit of length in the SI system, again, we've been stressing it yeah. all throughout the show, is meter. Meters. And meter is about the length of the English mm. Yard yeah. or three, so three feet. feet. Yeah. Just throw that in yeah. there, you know, just if you wanted to make a little yeah. comparison. Because sometimes mm. when you go into, for example, you go to the hardware store, they might say, you know, get me three feet of this or four feet of that and yeah. get me a yard of yeah. this. When you go to the cloth store, what is that really? Mm. So mm. We, in Jamaica, although it is that we're a metric system, we use these things interchangeably. And so sometimes it's good for you to note these things. Yes, yeah, definitely. All right. So length is the attribute mm -hmm. of the object. So length is your, the attribute of the object, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. All right. So. So variation um, of length is area. And I'm sure that you guys are very familiar with <laughs> yeah, area. Yeah, we have, we have done so many lessons on, on area. Yes. Right? So as we know, area is the, the amount of space enclosed in a, in a particular um, region. Mm -hmm. So as we can see here, if we are finding the area enclosed in this region, we're basically looking at how many unit squares, right, we can fit into, into this particular um, region. Um, in this case, for example, we are using a little centimeter squares. Mm -hmm. So 
definitely we are seeing we can fit 10 of these little squares in the in the length 10 in, in the width so we know that we'll have 100 of these little um, centimeter squares um, covering this particular surface so the area here would be 100 square centimeters oh so you mean if i if i really should measure everything it would really work out to 100 square centimeters yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, from that, interesting, right? All right. Um, we're dipping a little bit deeper mm -hmm. into mass. And mass is the measurement of the amount of matter in an object. Yeah. Okay. So here we have, you know, gas, liquid, solid. And we know that the basic mass is our is, grams. Is gram. Right. 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 And then here we have a conversion. Again, if you, if you want to move from gram to, to, to pounds, because there are times, again, as you have explained before, mm -hmm. when we, we really need to have this type of conversion. So approximately 454 um, grams would give you a pound. Right? Oh, see so me, when I want a pound of rice, yeah. is actually 454 grams. Yeah. You can imagine nice. going to a shop, a corner shop, and say, give me 454 grams of rice. Well, I don't know if it were there yet. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't really know. I wouldn't probably use it. But it's yeah. good to know, it right? It's good to know. All right. And mass. So the mm. weight and mass are re related, but they're not the same. And this is interesting because yeah. we use weight yeah, and, mass and mass to mean the same. Yeah, right. we use it interchangeably. Mm -hmm. So weight is actually the pull of gravity on an object. Mm -hmm. um, the greater the mass, the larger the pull of gravity. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So. so here we are seeing the same person. Right? All these, they are the same persons. But on the, on the moon, they are saying my weight on the, on the earth is about 560 newtons. Mm -hmm. Right? While um, my weight on the moon is around 90, 90 newtons, mm -hmm. but still her, her mass is 56 kilograms. So wherever she goes, although the, um, our weight is, is this amount on the, on the earth, our weight are, is that on the moon, but her mass remains um, the same. So while you, the, the, the weight may change, the mass remains the same. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Hi from the moon. <laughs> How about volume? Yeah. So, yeah, so volume, volume is the amount of space something takes up, right? And we know that the basic unit used for volume is liter, as we have said before. This unit is used for volume of liquid. So any form of liquid, your water, your cooking oil, your, your gas, you know, all of mm -hmm. these, we, we will use um, liters. Right now, how do we find the, the volume of a particular um, cube? Right, as we can see here, again, similar to what we did with the area, mm -hmm. where we, we see how many of these little unit squares would fit in this particular region. If we will find the volume now, what we want to do is to find how many of these little cubes, one unit cubes, would fit in that particular, um, particular um, in this case, a cuboid that you want to fill up. Mm -hmm. Here we are seeing that this would take um, our 16 of those small um, cubes to fill up this large cube. So the volume in this case would be 16 um, cube centimeters. So let us move on. All right. Um. All right. So here we are seeing now how can we find the, the volume of an object without a, a definite length, width, or height, right? In this case, the, the, the volume of a rock. So we are not seeing a length or width or height, a definite length, width, and height. Mm -hmm. How can we find that? Um, one, one way in which we can do this, if you realize we have two measuring cylinders, mm -hmm. um, here we are seeing the water level in the first one to be somewhere about 17.1 um, milliliter. Now, after we immerse the stone in the water, it went up to 19.8 milliliters. So here we are seeing a, a change. Mm -hmm. So that, that change must be the, 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 the actual um, volume for the stone now, mm -hmm. because it actually changed the, the, the volume from where it was before to a, a higher um, figure. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is how we, one way in which we can find the volume 
of an object that does not have a definite length, width, and height. Okay. All right, and then from, from there we can find the mass as well. Okay, all right. So, and we have, we note that one milliliter is equal to one cube centimeter. Yeah. All right, so let's get into some activity. Leroy is, play, is planning to tile his driveway. He wants to know the number of tiles he should purchase. Mm. So he wants to tile his driveway, wants to make it look a little bit better, and he needs to now know how many tiles he needs to purchase. Yeah. So firstly, mm -hmm. Leroy measured his driveway, right? right? And he knows that one of the lengths is 15 meters. Another length is eight, eight meters. meters. Right. And he also went ahead and this is the and got some tiles, some right? Tiles, right? So all right, so he went to the store now and he found out the tiles that he liked, mm -hmm. he got the um, the measurements for those tiles. Yeah. So it's um twenty five by ten centimeters. So mm -hmm. twenty five centimeters by ten centimeter right. tile. But here here he has a challenge now. No, he needs to find out how many tiles can now mm -hmm. fit in, in the that. area that uh, he has, right? Right, and not just that, mm -hmm. but the driveway is measured in, in what? What's the unit Meters. There? Meters. While okay. the, the tile is in... Centimeters. Yeah, so some conversion will have to take place for, for him to determine the number of tiles he, he's going to really need. So Leroy has his work cut out for him. Yeah. All right. So we went ahead now and, you know, just make it a little bit easier yeah. for you guys to see. So... We have our driveway and then we have our tile. Oh, yeah. the very so first <laughs> thing we need to determine is the area, area of the driveway. The driveway. Yeah. Right. And so we determined the area of the driveway mm. to be 120 square meters. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think is the next thing we need to find out? Oh, we can find the, the area for the tile. So we also need to find the area for the tile, bearing in mind the area for the tile is in centimeter and um, the tile sorry is measured in centimeter and the area will therefore be in squared centimeters mm -hmm. so the area of the tile is actually 250 squared centimeters yeah. okay All right no Leroy has a problem mm -hmm. he knows the area of the driveway <clears throat> he knows the area of the tile but he cannot determine how many tiles can fit into his driveway mm -hmm. until we have some sort of commonality. Yeah, exactly. Right? So we need to have both our area for our driveway and our tile mm -hmm. in the same unit. unit. But which one will, would we convert, though? Um, because we can convert the, the meters to centimeters, mm -hmm. as we did before. Mm -hmm. And we can also convert the meters, too. Mm -hmm. Right? So whichever way. But which one would we, would we convert? I say, in, I don't know, the, the tile... Because I want to know how many tiles can fit in there. Ah. No? I, I think we should convert the driveway. Try to convert the driveway. Yeah. All right. So which one? Remember, the, the tile now is going to go in the driveway. In the driveway. Mm -hmm. So, again, convert your tile to figure it out. The, how much of it is going to go into your driveway? How much of that is going to go in my driveway? So yeah. since, since we're going to put um, centimeters in this thing, then we want to know how many centimeters will go into, into our driveway. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to convert our driveway, mm -hmm. convert the meters, and see how many of that centimeter will go in this one centimeters now. All right? So let us do the conversion. Okay. All right? So converting... To centimeters. All right. All right. But a crucial thing here now, we are not just converting um, meters to centimeters. You realize that we are, we are converting, converting meter square. Meter square. Or squared meters. Or squared yes. meters <laughs> to squared um, centimeters. Yes. So someone may be asking, why do we multiply by, by 10,000? When we have just said that there, there are 100 centimeters, give you one meter. Why 10,000? Well, we just, we just said it, you know, we said we're converting squared meters mm -hmm. to squared centimeters. Right. So that is the essential thing there. That's the essential it's squared thing. Meters, right. not just meters, but squared meters. Squared meters. So it's actually going to be right. So, so since if we're looking at a at the it, let us let us show it on the board. Yes. So let us say this is my square. Right. So it's a one meter by a one meter square. Mm -hmm. Right. But we know that one hundred centimeters give you one meter. Mm -hmm. So this is really one hundred. Um, centimeter by 100 centimeter. 
so the 100 times the 100 would give me the, the area. 10,000. Which would give me my, my 10,000. Right? So that is how we, we, we get the 10,000 there. Right? So it is crucial because students normally make the, the mistake right here. All right? It's, so we're converting to centimeters. So it's going to be 1,200,000 squared yes. centimeters. centimeters. So right. guys, disregard this. It's supposed yeah. to be squared centimeters. centimeters. All right. All right. All right. So there we have the conversion. All right. Right. So now we can determine the number of tiles needed. Mm. So we have 1,200,000 squared centimeters. Yeah. And we can now divide the area of our tiles to find out the number of tiles. Yeah. And the area of our tile was 250 mm -hmm. squared centimeters. Yeah. So we need now 4,800 tiles. tiles. Yeah. That's a lot of tiles. Though. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. You have a big driveway. That's a big driveway. Wow. Well, but, but, well, the tiles are not too big, really, when you look at it. Oh, well, you know, so, so maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're buying itsy bitty tiles. Yeah. Now, Leroy has another problem. Mm. Leroy wants, wants to reach the hardware before it closes. The speedometer below shows the speed at which he's traveling. If the hardware is 25,000 meters away, how long will it take to reach the hardware at this speed? Oh. Right, so he's traveling, mm, that look like, looks like what, 81 mm -hmm. um, kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. right? That is more than the speed you're traveling. <laughs> you know, not you. This is obviously not you, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he's traveling at 81 been. kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. All right, so we, we definitely we're going to need some conversion again, all right, because mm -hmm. we're looking at kilometers per hour and uh, the, the, the distance from home to the hardware is in meters. Mm -hmm. All right, so let us see how it works out this. Right, so in terms of conversion, we know that one kilometer per hour is equal to 999.99 .99 meters per hour. Right, so he, he would know that. Then since he's, he's traveling at 81 kilometers per hour, right, all he needs to do is do what now? Multiply 81 times in 9,999.99, right? And so he ends up with 80,000. 999.9 meters per hour, right? So that is what that is the, the, the speed he's traveling at now as it relates to meters per hour, all right? So he still don't reach where he, where he wants to reach as yet. All right, so now we need to find out how long it will take. Yeah. All right, so definitely what we're going to do now, what is speed? Speed is distance over, over time. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we have um, 25,000 meters. We're going to divide that now by the speed at which he's traveling. We see that he's traveling at 31 hundredth hours. It will take him 31 hundredth of an hour to reach there. Converting that to minutes now, it will take him 18.6 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right, so when you look at it, the numbers look big. But when you actually do the conversion, you realize that it, it, it it's, not really that take, long. it's not long. 18 minutes, one yeah. quick drive. Yeah. All right. All right. So as we, as we mentioned before about um, how we, we calculate speed, that speed is equal to the distance divided by, by time. Mm -hmm. Then based on that now, we know that we can transpose that same formula now to Fine. arrive at whether we want to find distance mm -hmm. or time, time. Or, or speed. Mm -hmm. right? And CSEC students normally use um, these triangles to help them to remember. Help them to remember. Yes. Right? So using this triangle, we see that speed is equal to distance over time. Right? If it is time, it's what? Distance divide by, divided by speed. Yeah. And if it's distance, it's speed multiplied by time. Yeah. All right. So again, if you want to take a little picture, you know, you may have it already, but you can take a picture. Yeah. Activity time. It's Yay. that time of the morning. Aren't we excited? More activities. More activities. But these are the activities that we walk you through some and we're going to throw these at you and then mm -hmm. see what you get and yeah. we'll give you some answers. So the diagram, not drawn to scale, yeah. represents a map of a lane fields drawn, mm -hmm. on, drawn on the grid of a one centimeter, one centimeter squares. Mm -hmm. The scale of the map is 1 to 1,250 
So then you're asked to calculate the distance in centimeters mm -hmm. from F to S on the map. Yeah. All right. Question, why do they normally say not drawn to scale? Because, all right, if I'm representing the field outside, on the paper, I really cannot draw the field outside. Yeah. So it's not yeah. drawn to scale. So I have to scale it down so it can fit on my sheet of paper, right? right? So I'm representing this real life thing, but the real life thing cannot hold on my little eight by five mm -hmm. sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. So I have to scale it down mm -hmm. so that it fits. However, you are now given the scale at, um, for the actual representation of the real thing. Right. So you know that it's one to 1,250. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason right. why. And then th there are also cases where the, the, the dimension may not be, when, if you actually use a ruler to measure on the paper itself, it, it may, may not, be, not accurate. Be, be accurate. True. Right? So you just have to use um, whatever key that they give you. Yes. All right. All right. So part one, um, calculate the distance in centimeters from F to S on the map. Mm -hmm. So we need to identify our points, F and S. Right, so we are seeing F there, mm -hmm. and S is up here. And we're asked to calculate the distance. Yeah. No. Distance, we just looked at it before. How is, how is it that we're going to calculate the distance yeah. from this? All right, and looking at it, we are seeing that we have, we have a, the slant height. Yes, and I'm seeing right. where I can form... A little triangle. Yeah, we can form a right angle triangle right there. So yes. let us do that and see what happens. All right. All right. So here we have our right angle triangle. All right. Right. And and this now should should turn on a light bulb in our head. Oh, right angle triangle, and I have two dimensions. All right. Obviously, now FS would be my the hypotenuse of mm -hmm. this right angle triangle. Right. So we can now go ahead and and calculate the length of this side. Right. All right. So I hope you guys, the light bulbs were turned on. <laughs> and how is it that we got the five, the five squared and the six squared units? Uh, let's let's figure out how we got that. Mm -hmm. So from our diagram there, if we actually counted, so if we count, if we count F um, S, mm -hmm. and let's call that point down here. Let's call this point down here. G. Yeah. So if we counted from S to G, would have gotten one, two, three, four, five units. Mm -hmm. And if we counted from G to F, yeah. we would have gotten six, six units. units. And again, mm -hmm. as Mr. Price would have mentioned, we're finding the length of our hypotenuse. Yeah. And so we'd use our favorite friend, yeah. Pythagoras', Pythagoras theorem, theorem, to find the length of my hypotenuse. Mm -hmm. So it's actually 7.8 centimeters. Centimeter. And remember that we said from before, the grid is of one centimeter mm -hmm. squares. Definitely. Right? So now part two. Part two says calculate the distance in meters from F to S on the actual field. Mm -hmm. So now we're going from centimeters, which we did in part one, yeah. to meters, which we're now going to do in part two. Mm -hmm. Now again, guys, at home, we would have gone through the steps that we take. We need to identify where am I? Mm -hmm. So where I'm at, where I need to go, how many units in between, yeah. determine whether or not you are going to be multiplying or dividing. dividing. All right. So I'm going to give you like a minute, just a minute, and I want for you to tell me what you get. All right. They can do it, right? All right. All right let's see. Ah. All mm. right. <laughs> so here so we. Someone is asking, you know, how all this one thousand two hundred and two hundred fifty comes in play. Right, because I know that I'm going from centimeters to meters, yeah. so I'm just simply what dividing by a hundred. Right. Right. So I know I'm dividing mm. by a hundred, but one thousand one thousand two hundred fifty. <laughs> Remember uh, that the question stated that it's the, the actual, actual field. field. Yeah. Right. And if yeah. we go back up top, we'll see that the scale of the map is mm -hmm. one to one thousand two hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So so on this map, mm -hmm. when we see one one centimeter. Right on the actual field, it is one thousand two hundred fifty mm -hmm. centimeters. Mm -hmm. So that is why we had to multiply this the seven point eight centimeter by the one thousand two hundred fifty. Right, then that figure in centimeter will divide it by by one hundred, and that will give us our calculation in meters. 
And yeah. that's a very important thing to note. This yeah. is something that oftentimes you may miss. So again, when you're going through your questions, mm -hmm. please underline the key points yeah. because actual field yeah. is a very important yeah. thing to yeah. note. Definitely. All right. Now part three of the question says that Daniel ran the distance from F to S in 9.72 mm -hmm. seconds. Daniel, faster than me. Yes, so sub 10. <laughs> he's running sub 10. Right. <laughs> so he's asked to calculate his average speed mm -hmm. in meters yeah. per second. All right. Let's go. All right. All right. So, okay, go ahead. So the, the 9.75, the 9 right? That's the, the, the time that he ran. Mm -hmm. All right. We want to find the speed. Again, how do we find speed? Distant. Divided by time. By time. Mm -hmm. And we have already found our distance to be um, 97.5 uh, meters. Mm -hmm. So we divide that now by the time, and that will give us um, our speed. Right? So the speed of, at which he's traveling is 10 meters per second. All right. So Daniel is moving quickly. Yeah. Um, part B says, in kilometers, we're asked now to give our answer in kilometers per hour mm -hmm. to three significant figures. Yeah. And again, that's a key point to note, three significant figures. So we, are, we have our time in meters per second, mm -hmm. and we're now converting to kilometers per, per hour. hour. Yeah. So all uh, we will simply, so again, we have <laughs> 10.0 meters per second, and we're going to multiply by 3,600, 3,600, Divided by 1,000, which right. gives us 36 kilometers per, per hour. hour. Right. So again, you know, we could go through the cal calculation of the whole conversion. It's going to take up some, some time still. But normally, we'd see that would multiply by just um, 3.6, mm -hmm. right? If you're converting from a meter per second to kilometer per hour, you just multiply that figure by, by 3.6, right? And we can, could go to, through the, the different conversions. So there we see our, our answer. Now, why didn't we just write our answer as 36 kilometers per hour? All right. So because as stated before, mm -hmm. it is important for us to write it to three, three significant, significant figures. figures. Yeah, right? that's important. All right. Now, we were having a discussion as to why it is that we wrote 36.0 kilometers versus just, just 36. 36. Now, as we noted from before, it is important for us to write it to three, three significant, significant figures. And here, when we look at 36.0 kilometers, mm -hmm. this is actually three significant figures, yeah, right? Yeah. So 36 by itself is only two. two significant figures. So that is the reason why we have to write the point mm -hmm. zero. Definitely. All right. Mm -hmm. So now in the diagram below, it shows a map of an island drawn on a grid of one centimeter squares. The map is drawn to scale of one to 50,000. Copy and complete each of the following sentences. One centimeter on the map represents? Right, and, and that's a giveaway because it's right there in the scale. 50,000 50, centimeters. centimeters. On the island, an area of one squared centimeter on the map represents the area of dash squared mm -hmm. centimeter on the island. Yeah. How would we get that? All right. So again, if it is that one centimeter is represented by 50,000 centimeters, if we're doing the squared centimeters mm -hmm. now, it's just simply 50,000 multiply 50,000. Yeah. Right? So we would mm. then get... A big number. Very big number. <laughs> squared <laughs> centimeters. Million, five million. Squared centimeters. Squared centimeters. All right. Yeah, that's a big space. It's a big space. Well, cent cent when you look at centimeters, still, uh, very small units. So. Yeah. so part three says, given that K is 100,000 centimeters, a distance of one centimeter on the map represents the distance of dash kilometers mm -hmm. on the island. Right. Right. And again, now we're converting 1,000, one 100,000 centimeters mm -hmm. to kilometers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, 
That's we it. know from before that we had 50,000 50, centimeters. Mm -hmm. um, we div divide that by 100,000 and we get 0 0.5 kilometers. Yeah. All right. The very last question no. L, L and M are two tracking stations. State in centimeters the distance of L, LM on the map. Mm -hmm. So let's identify LM on our map. All right. So there is L. M is right there. All right. And we mm -hmm. know we need to calculate the distance from L to M on the map yeah. for the two tracking stations. Mm -hmm. Now we got eight centimeters. Yeah. How did we get this eight centimeters? Right. Well, it's really, when you look at the words used, mm -hmm. um, initially they said we should calculate. Mm -hmm. Now they said state. Mm -hmm. So it simply means I can just look on my, on my map and just count. I don't have to do any form of calculation. Okay. Right? So if I count all these um, dimensions this, of the squares, mm -hmm. so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So that's, that's, that's just the length of that line. So easy peasy. Yeah. You know, sometimes you see these questions and you're wondering, oh my exactly. gosh, what's Exactly. But if you pay attention to these keywords, calculate versus state. It will give you a hint as to what is required of yeah, you. how much work is really needed. Okay. And, and this will value maybe about a one mark. And that too also gives you <laughs> gives an, idea an idea as to how much work you need to put in. Because yeah. you'll see the marks on the paper. Mm -hmm. If it's a one mark question, really and truly, guys, yeah. it's more like look and state something. Definitely. And if it's maybe a two or three mark, you know you need to put in mm -hmm. a little bit more yeah. energy. So part four. Five says, calculate the actual, no guys, it should be actual distance, <laughs> in kilometers, right? So we mm. now know that from L to M is eight, eight centimeters, centimeters, and we're going to multiply that by 50,000, mm. because again, we know the actual, you know, it's one to 50,000 on the mm. map. And so here we're going to get 400,000 centimeters, mm. but you're required to write it in mm kilometers so uh, we then need to convert our centimeters to kilometers, kilometers. right and we do that by dividing, dividing. by a hundred thousand mm. and we would get four kilometers Kilo i remember they, they would have given us the that one hundred thousand already in in, in, the, the, in, the, in previous parts in previous yes. parts so we have to pay attention so, so that is what, as I said before, these are our questions that students normally really just mess up in the exam because they are not paying attention to, to, the, to the scale given. They are still thinking about, all right, 100 centimeters given one meter. But what is the, 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 the scale that is actually being used um, in this particular question, right? So it's very important for them to really look, ensure that they check and double check the unit that is given, the scale that is given, and the unit that is required um, for your final answer. So do you recommend now that when you read through your question, you kind of have a little jotting, a little side note yeah. where you have all of these important things? Because mm. sometimes, you know, you're moving through the question really quickly and you forget that in a previous section, this information was given. So mm. maybe as a little exam tip, you can have a little section on your paper where you write down the key points. Some persons like to underline, but sometimes mm -hmm. you underline and forget. Mm -hmm. So write down the key points so that as you go th move through the question you, and you realize that each section is related, you can now refer to these key points. Yeah, right? A little exam tidbit yeah. right there. All right. So part six says, let the, let the area shaded on the map be um be the forest reserve right mm -hmm. so by counting the squares estimate in squared uh, centimeter the area of the forest reserve as shown oh. right and here now remember in the in the, in the first segment mm -hmm. we spoke about estimation mm -hmm. so again you can easy well do mm. a little estimation right yeah. so for this particular thing, mm -hmm. we're going to ask that you guys take a little picture of yeah. it. Screenshot it, take a little picture, and we're going to call this homework. homework. All right? So take a picture right now, and homework it is. <laughs>